Tom actually did. I mean, it's got to be the longest three seconds of my life. Something that's always gonna, always gonna stick with me, and still haunts me to a certain extent to this day. Every year, theme parks compete to reopen at Easter with the biggest, scariest thrill ride in the country. Apocalypse is 180 feet high, and just two days before opening, engineer Peter Dolloway was inside it at two in the morning when he fell. Well, I was asleep and uh, in bed and the pager went off and uh, I had a look at it and it said that there'd uh, been an accident at the Drayton Manor, which is the local theme park, and that a casualty had fallen 10 metres and uh, it said condition critical. When I got there, um, I was met by the officer who was already there, who I knew, uh, who said uh, that there was somebody trapped up at the top of the ride. And uh, I said, who's up there? And he said, well, there's a, there's a fire and rescue guy up there. But there's, uh, I said, is there an ambulance guy up there? He said, no, it's too dangerous, he said. So I thought, I don't like heights very much. And I knew that if he wasn't up there, there was a good reason for it. So that sort of concentrated my mind a bit. There's a porthole at the bottom, I ducked in through that and looked up and I thought, oh, he's probably on the first platform, but I thought 40 metres isn't very far. So I started climbing. When I got to the first platform, it was obvious that he wasn't there, I thought, he's going to be at the top. So I just kept climbing. My legs were pretty rubbery by this stage and I'm not very fit been quite a long climb and I hadn't had any breaks going up it, I just kept going. I tore this, the glove on my left hand and the right one was filling up with fluid. When, when you've been sweating a lot into your gloves they sort of form a little pocket of fluid. The next platform was, the door was shut so I had to climb, you had, you had to climb around the ladder and go up squeezing in between the pipe work and the outside of the ladder and I tore my coat again um, and when I came up through there I could see the fire and rescue guy there and I could see the casualty lying on his side. I was expecting to find somebody who had fallen at a distance and was injured and depending on which way they land it's either going to be a head injury or they'll have done something to their legs and their back so I was expecting that kind of injury. Hey. Yeah the name's Peter. Hey Peter, my name's Phil, I'm a doc. I'll come here to help you, okay? Immediate impression was that he was um, conscious and alert and responding to me. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little look at your leg, mate, okay? And his uh, pulse rate was all right, but he was obviously bleeding quite badly from his leg. So the first thing I did was put my hand on it to stop it bleeding because I didn't have any of my equipment with me. I'd just come up by myself. Yeah, really cold as well. Yeah, I'm going to sort you out now. I'm going to give you something to take the pain away. And it was at that point I asked the, uh, the fire and rescue man if he could uh, organise for my kit, which I'd left at the bottom of the, uh, the ladder, to be um, either brought up or hauled up. I was give you give you some real Colombian in a minute someone said about something referring to the drugs and they got they gave me that and that, that kicked in very quickly it was, I wasn't really concerned either what else was going on after that anyway I could, I could feel my toes feel my feet moving that and just like they but I've got this pain in my back and I'm just thinking god I just don't want to be crippled there just, I mean, as far as I feel, that'd be, like the, that'd be worse than dying to me. If, if I could, couldn't walk, that'd be like the worst, worst thing that could possibly happen to me. Gary, you're right. Hi, Chris. There's the problem now is getting Peter down. A specialist rope rescue team from the Staffordshire Fire Service had been called, led by Chris Hughes. I knew that Casualty had been there for some time and obviously been in a state of shock, plus his injuries. Um, 
we needed to move as quickly as we could. I thought that really the only way to do this would be with it using a thing called a Kendrick extrication device, KED. What it is, it's a rigid piece that goes down behind their back and then straps around their waist. And it had the advantage of being able to hold his neck and his back in good position, but also keep him in a sitting position, which would be make him less likely to drop his blood pressure and become unwell while he was being lowered. How you doing? Once we'd actually got the casualty into the rescue harness, uh, the next problem was to actually lift him off the hatch. Now, at this time he was lying on his side, so it was a case of we had to gently roll him over, take up his weight on the ropes, he's quite a large chap, lift him off the hatch to be able to open the hatch to lower him through. <laughs> Can you tell us what it's like properly? That's good. Comfortable enough. That's it, Chris. Keep coming. Nice to meet Chris. I was watching this chap go down. He just kept on going down and down and down. And I realised that I had to get down this off this platform again. Um, and I had to get down quite quickly because I needed to see the casualty quite quickly. And I think that was my worst moment. As Phil watched Peter go down, his fear of heights threatened to overwhelm him. He wondered, would he ever get down again? Do you want me to be, listen, if I put the uh, top part of the rescue strap on you, just to get it back your... Um, I'd be very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good moment, in fact, because I knew I was getting down. I knew that if I did anything stupid, uh, that, that there was a rope that would protect me from injury. And, so it was just a question of getting down as quickly as I could to, uh, to get to see the casualty again. Two hours after the fall, Peter was finally on his way to hospital in Birmingham. Surgeons operated on his leg, and x-rays revealed two broken vertebrae. Luckily, his back has healed, but the accident has changed his attitude to life. This has been a sort of wake-up call for me, like, like you're not going to live forever. You can, you can, die. 